The Pixel 8 Pro a January update. I finally got video boost, even though that wasn't specifically part of the January update. That was part of the December feature drop. It is, is now available on my Pixel 8 Pro. We could go into camera settings here. We have video pulled up. I go up to the top, trying to do it through a viewfinder, harder than I thought, and sure enough, there it is, video boost. Currently it is off, but you could turn that on and get all the AI enhanced benefits of video boost. Not a lot in the January update. It wasn't a huge update. It wasn't like the December feature drop that we just got with a lot of the things added in the new AI stuff for the Pixel 8 Pro. I would like at some point Google to say something about when the Pixel 8 is going to be getting some of this magic goodness, as well as the Pixel 7 Pro. We'd like to see some of those things in pad like they have in past years start to trickle down the line, but it's a tricky, it's a slippery slope for them, especially we talked about it. You know, they're going to sell the AI is kind of the new camera models and, and justifying uh, differentiation in prices between the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro. Well, then AI might be one way they do it. They say, well, even though this has a Tensor 3, even though it has access to the internet, we're not going to give you the features on that. You got to buy the more expensive device. But, but let's put the commerce part aside for a moment. Let's put the actual business part aside and just talk about this phone in general. I, I, had the, uh, I wrote an article for Android Police about my 2024 kind of smartphone wish list, what I want to see. And in the Pixel 9 Pro, I had to sit there and think about what are the areas of improvement I'd want to see in this year's Pixel. And I had to think pretty hard for the first time in a while. You know, if, if days of the Pixel 6, Pixel 5, Pixel 4 XL, even the Pixel 7 Pro, I could have knocked out a 10-page a, a essay in a hurry. But that's not the case anymore. I, you can't complain about the display anymore. The Super Actua display and the 2400 nits, absolutely gorgeous. It's saturated, it's nice, it's a beautiful OLED panel for a change. Battery life, not a concern anymore. It's even running even better on the update than it was before. Battery drain is non-existent on this device now. It's been off the charger all day long, and not a lot of use, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour of screen on time, but it's been off the charger since eight o'clock in the morning. We're at what? Let's take a look here. 214 and we're at 95 percent. Sure, it's been on Wi-Fi. Not a lot of drain when we're talking the battery life there, but that's OK. Normal, <laughs> normally, when you're looking at Pixel devices in the past, I would be at 75, 80 percent right now and wondering where the heck is my battery life. The other thing, overheating. Really haven't had it. Uh, if you really run it hard, if you're updating a bunch of stuff, maybe you can feel it get a little warm on the top section here. But I haven't had any of those issues that I have with the Pixel 7 Pro. Pixel 6 on down the line. 7a specifically, I know a lot of people had issues with that. I think Tensor G3, for the first time in years, they've locked in their new chip right from the start, and it really is giving impressive performance in battery life. And what, you know, what, I, what I eventually came up with was maybe they could squeeze a little bit more raw power out of a Tensor G4 for the Pixel 9 Pro. Maybe you'd want a little bit better gaming performance out of a device like that. But what's the trade-off? Is the trade-off something else that I got to give up here? Is the trade-off, it's going to be uh, $100 to $200 more expensive? I don't want that. This is fine. You know, I, people complain, oh, the S23 Ultra is better. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, this is a snappy, fantastic device that just rips through everything. You want to say that the Tensor G3 isn't uh, up to spec and up to benchmarks and all the rest of it. Yeah, you say, fine, say that. But when you, people who have actually sat down and used this phone, I, with the exception of the high-end gaming stuff, I would be hard pressed, I think you'd be hard pressed to find people who have legitimate, serious complaints about the way this phone runs. And you can go back even the Pixel Fold with that and the Tensor G2, really locked in. Some of the smoothest experiences I've had on Android. And that absolutely extends to this guy here with the Tensor G3 and the Pixel 8 Pro. It's the best Google phone in years, whether you like it or not. I had someone just comment just a few moments ago saying it's trash, you shouldn't use it. I, that's nonsense. That's just, uh, just, just blind, hatred for a brand because you like Samsung or you like Apple, whoever you like, and you're just not really looking at the facts. You have to be able to, you have to be able to sit down with each of these products when they come in. And that's when I, you, you got to look at it from a journalism perspective. Forget what you like, forget what you think, forget all this stuff. Use what's in front of you and report on what you see. And you know, I, I am the first one through the wall to bash Google when things go wrong. And you have not heard a peep about this device, because every time I put my SIM back in it, every time I get one of those updates, it has been absolutely fantastic. It has been just stunning performance, gorgeous display, lovely build quality. The one thing that I would change on a Pixel 9 Pro, I'll tell you this, whatever material they're using for this here, it's gonna be, be hard to show on camera. Maybe we can get it. 
whatever material they're using for the camera visor, uh, uh, beef it up a little bit. <laughs> you got to use a harder grade stainless steel, whatever you got to do. Not working. This thing scuffed up literally within moments in my pocket. Looks awful. Same thing on the Pixel Fold. So they have the same kind of camera bar material that they're using. Both were nightmares. So Google, if, you, if, you're, if you're looking for things to improve for the Pixel 9 Pro, that's definitely one that you're going to want to look at. But from a wholesale performance perspective, what do you want? The extras that you get now with Video Boost, I, I think you're going to be relatively impressed with this phone going forward and with devices that Google chooses gets the cool stuff, which is really the downside. But you go to video and you could go ahead and shoot in 4K, get all that uh, the video boost stuff. So if you have low light images or low light video, rather, if you have graininess or whatever, it's going to process that and take that all away. Fixing white balance, shadows, stuff just making the video usable. And unlike yesterday's video where we were talking about the S24 Ultra kind of adding stuff, and Google does that as well. All right, so they don't get a pass. Google does a lot of that as well, where they have uh, the, the best take and all the rest of it that they're adding kind of things into the mix. I am totally okay with any AI functionality that fixes the, the data that's already there. So if you have stuff and information that's already come into the lens, if you have video that you've already taken and you're just basically washing that in essence and kind of making it more presentable, I have zero problem with that. So if you're taking a photo of something that you have here and you, and you go ahead and you go through it as I go through my, uh, my uh, what, I'm trying to find a, a photo that I've taken recently. But if you're going through there and you're just cleaning up some of the stuff that you have that you already took, no problem with that. If you're adding stuff, then I start to have some issues with AI and the rest of it. But as, uh, I think what's great about what's Google's approach to AI, and you're starting to see that now in the Pixel 8 Pro, is with Gemini Nano, they've really focused in AI a little bit. My problem with AI is I'll sit there and it would just be too overwhelming. There's too much stuff going on with it. There's too many options. So I want developers to lock in and you tell me, you're the expert supposedly in this. You tell me where AI is going to enhance your software. You tell me where AI can best enhance the camera. Don't have me sit there and figure it out in front of a prompt. Like it's the DOS days, I gotta sit there and figure out what I gotta type in. Let me know what you think AI could help with Implement it in a way that doesn't require any user input. Don't have me sit there and figure out which settings I want tweaked and all the rest of it. Give me the output, have kind of an auto functionality, and you let AI go to work. That's important, artificial intelligence. Let it go to work for me and come up with the best image or the best processing or the best white balance and all the rest of this stuff. So that's why I like Google's approach to AI. I hope Samsung does the same, but I really like the fact that Google has kind of taken this huge concept of AI and boiled it down to individual apps. Make them bite-sized. Make them small enough to digest. Summarize and record. Another great example. You could sit there and have a whole lecture or interview, and it could kind of boil it down to the salient points. I love that. That's nice and simple. It's not high. It's not high tech. It's not anything that requires a PhD to figure out or to use or to come up with commands or what's the problem. That's what you see on Chat ChatGPT all the time. What's the proper prompt? What combination of prompts do I need to get? Enough of that. Make it simple. That's the point of AI. Make it to the point where I just got to sit there, use the app. You know what I'm doing. It's supposed to be intuitive. You know I'm trying to take a picture. Give me the best picture. That's what I want without adding too much garbage like Samsung plans to do. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.